Some call it the Battle of the Little Bighorn. To some, it is the Battle of the Greasy Grass. Others know it as Custer's Last Stand. No matter what you call it, this is one of the most famous battles of American history and the American Indians' greatest victory over the U.S. Army. Wyoming Traveler, and I'm here at the site of the Battle of the Little Bighorn. Below me, you can see one of the gullies in which the troops under Colonel Custer came down to attack the Indian village, which lay in the background. The Battle of the Little Bighorn was two battles fought in the same area. There was an engagement fought by the troops of Major Reno and Captain Benteen. Then there was the fight led by Lieutenant Colonel Custer and most of the 7th Cavalry. With Cheyenne and Sioux warriors as guides, along with troopers of the 7th Cavalry, we will trace the battlefield movements. The U.S. government directed the Army to force Cheyenne and Sioux bands in the Powder River area back onto the reservations. The Army planned a three-pronged campaign. One element was to move from the south, another to come from the northwest, and a third to move west. The central column was the 7th Cavalry, under the command of Lieutenant Colonel George Custer, a Civil War hero. Custer's scouts had informed him of a large village located on the banks of the Little Bighorn River. Custer rapidly marched his regiment towards this area. Custer divided his troops into four detachments. One company was detached to guard the pack train. Captain Benteen took three companies to scout to the southwest. Major Reno was ordered to take three companies and attack the south side of the village. Custer took five companies, about 210 men, and rode along the ridge to attack the north end of the village. Here's a view of Custer's battle plan. It was down here in the valley below that Major Reno led his attack on the Indian village. Reno Creek. Custer Reno here then divided up his men with Benteen toward the noonday sun. The warriors prepared to defend the camp, probably under the leadership of Chief Gall. The warriors put up a spirited defense against Reno's troops. Reno crossed a little bit more to the mountain. He did not from the toward the noonday sun. Reno was met by warriors at the end of the teepee and was chased back. Everyone wanted Custer. Yellow hair, so excited to feel the camp as warriors mounted and took chase on Reno. The danger of being Outflank, Reno was forced to make a disorganized retreat. In the timber below is where Major Reno's forces first attacked the village. 
Then when he became endangered of being outflanked, he made a disorganized retreat up this ridge. It was along this ridge that Major Reno led his disorganized forces in a retreat and established a defensive position. All along here, Reno's forces and then later Benteen's formed a defensive line of rifle pits. Captain Benteen, with his three companies, soon arrived to reinforce Major Reno. He was followed by Captain McDowell with the pack train. As Major Reno prepared for his attack, Colonel Custer, with the five companies, moved north three and a half miles to attack the village. Custer's actions at this point are uncertain since none of the men with him survived. What historians and archaeologists speculate happened is based on battlefield evidence and accounts, sometimes conflicting, of Cheyenne and Sioux warriors. Some historians suggest that Custer, or part of his force, moved down the Medicine Trail Coulee to attack the village. In this area, Captain Keogh's command Annihilated. At the river, the troopers were met by a large force of warriors and retreated back up the ridge. All right, this is where this is where you train. This was a running battle between the troopers and Cheyenne and Sioux warriors, led by Chief Crazy Horse of the Sioux and Chief Two Moons of the Cheyenne. Some of the troopers dismounted and formed skirmish lines against the Indian attack. Other historians suggest that Custer took part of the the force and march north and then turn west to attack the village. Whatever action Custer took on that fateful afternoon of June 25th, the results were the same. The troopers were forced to the top of the ridge where they were wiped out to the last man. The fighting forces of the mighty two nations, the fighting giant and the Rapaho. That was the day that Custer and his men, he met his demise on that day. June 25th, 1876, the battle of the Little Bighorn. As you see this reenactment unfold before you, this story is put together from facts and and descendants of those fighting Cheyenne friends too. The descendants of this Medicine Tail Coley, you are witnessing right and geographically where the actual battle took place. The river you see before you is a little big horn. The coulee you see up there to draw is known as Medicine Tail Coley this year. This is where Tucker went down. He went down into the battle, yes. They took him down. And that is the beginning of the end. Custer and his men saw their demise. They never saw the sun set on June 25th, 1876.
The Battle of the Little Big Horn was still not over. Major Reno, Captain Benteen, and their men were desperately fighting for their lives. The companies remained pinned down on the bluff, defending off the Indians for three hours until night fell. During the slack and the fighting on Reno Hill, because most of the warriors had moved off to fight Custer, Captain Weir and Company D moved out to contact Custer. They advanced a mile to what is today known as Weir Point. It was at this point that Captain Weir led his men from uh, the Benteen entrenchments to hopefully relieve Custer, but once he got here, he observed either the ending of Custer's detachment or the Indians pillaging the bodies of Custer's men. Then he also came under attack and retreated back to the Benteen defensive positions. Major Reno and Captain Benteen with their commands joined Weir but were forced back to their original positions because of increased Indian forces moving on their position. The next day the tribes broke camp and headed in different directions. Seeing is the moving up camp the Indians moved from site to site, leading the caravan is the caravan leader. The caravan leader has selected a young woman. It was not until June 27th, when General Terry's column arrived, that the full extent of the Custer defeat and the Indians' victory was realized. Today, the Little Bighorn Battlefield serves as a monument to the troopers and warriors who fought and died on that field. <laughs>